The banh mi, Vietnam's most famous sandwich, is popular for a reason. It's savory, tangy, fresh, herbaceous, kind of all at the same time. However, particularly here in the US, I've noticed that many establishments and recipes leave out a crucial component of the sandwich that is often overlooked by us Westerners. The ingredient which I speak of can take your banh mi from lame to flame. Today we are going to make a banh mi in its entirety from scratch, but before we do so, let's take a field trip to my favorite Vietnamese bakery to see how it's done the authentic way. Nulan Bakery has been slinging banh mi here in Chicago for many years. The unassuming location off Lawrence and Western is where I like to go and it never disappoints. Can I do a uh, one number one, one number, one number three? One. Tempting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got two Bon Mizzles. One of them is a head cheese. That's gonna be a different video. We're not gonna focus on that. It's my favorite one. This is my GF's favorite one, the lemongrass chicken. What's under the hood? Just opening a Bon Me on the side of the road, baby. We got this mad airy bread, French baguette, or Vietnamese baguette, that's been hollowed out with that flavorful chicken. You got these like julienne carrot daikon pickles, all the crunchy vegetables. That chicken dough. I think I know it has to be done. Let's start with the baguette. Vietnamese baguettes are a lot different than French baguettes. They're a lot lighter and more tender in texture, and there's a lot less of a crumb, which are those little holes that you see in good French bread. To the bowl of a stand mixer, add 500 grams of bread flour, eight grams kosher salt, four grams sugar, and five grams of instant yeast. Mix that all around with your hand a bit, then get the whole thing moving with the paddle attachment secured. Stream in 345 grams of room temperature water and process until the dough comes together, then switch to the dough hook attachment and knead the dough for 10 to 20 minutes. Really take your time here. We want to knead the dough until it passes what's called the window pane test, meaning that you can see the light pass through it when it's stretched without the dough ribbing. When the test is passed, the gluten in the dough is developed and ready to rest. Add a touch of oil to the bowl, plop your dough ball inside, and let it double in size for 30 minutes to an hour. Once she's ready, pour the dough out onto a smooth work surface, slap out any excess air, and portion into four equal parts. Forming the baguette is actually pretty easy as far as shaping goes. Alright, so shaping these guys is not elegant at all. Uh, this is how you do it. Don't be afraid to be rough. Well, here I'm just gonna grab it from the side like a piece of pizza. And slam it down, baby. Just kinda of spreading it out, helping it along. Starting at the top, we're gonna fold in and, and down. So pinch the sides. You can kind of start to use your thumbs depending on how big your hands are. The idea here is to taper the ends of the baguette, leaving the middle sort of fat and tall. Once you have your bread shaped, turn it over and pinch the seal shut, then store the finished loaves under some plastic wrap to keep them from drying out as you work on the others. This is a baguette pan. You don't need it. I've baked these on a baking sheet and it's been completely fine. These holes just allow for a more even bake. If you have one, use it. If not, sheet tray is fine. Let the baguettes rest on a baking tray for at least 30 minutes for their final proof. Meanwhile, preheat the oven to 500 Fahrenheit, 260 Celsius while you wait. We want the oven to be super hot before we bake. Vietnamese baguettes need moisture to work straight up. So here I'm using a nifty spray bottle filled with agua to get the job done. Moist in the baguettes liberally with water, then score each down its length. I'm using a razor blade to do it. Bake the baguettes for 15 minutes total. Every three minutes, open the oven, rotate the tray, and shoot the little guys with 10 to 12 sprays of water. Repeat this process throughout the 15 minute baking time. Without moisture, the baguettes will harden and burn. The baguettes will get more and more golden bee throughout its time in the heat dungeon, which is a good thing. So at first these are gonna be pretty hard, but they will soften up when you let them rest. A crucial step, don't dig into these, give them at least 20 minutes before you slice them open. Okay, bread out of the way, let's get into the chicky. My lemongrass chicken starts with thighs, because dark meat is flavorful meat. This is lemongrass. We have fun here, but really whacking the lemongrass a few times helps to wake it up, so have at it. Then it's off with the ends and outer rough layers. We want to get at that tender aromatic inside of the lemongrass, so chop up two stalks and add it to the two pounds of chicken thighs, along with four tablespoons of soy sauce, four cloves of minced garlic, four tablespoons of fish sauce, lime juice, and brown sugar each. Mix it up by hand and let it marinate for at least an hour or up to 12. 
to cook lechiki, add it to a hot cast iron with a touch of oil over medium high heat. Try to get some color on the chicken because brown food is flavorful food and the sugar should help you accomplish that quite easily. Just don't burn anything. Once the chicken is cooked and cooled off a bit, chop it into small chunks. You can do this ahead and keep it in the fridge for a few days or you can set it aside while you prep the other stuff. Okay, this is it. This is the not so secret component of a banh mi that will take it to the next level, pate. Pate is a meaty, rich French spread consisting of liver, aromatics, and butter. A lot of butter. In Vietnam, pork is usually the star of the show, but since we're doing a chicken banh mi, I figured we'd use chicken livers. Add half a sliced onion, a half pound of rinsed chicken liver, a clove of garlic, and half a cup of water to the saucepan. Bring the mixture up to a simmer, then cover and remove it from the heat and let it steam for five to 10 minutes, or really just until the livers are cooked through and still pink on the inside like this. Strain the liquids away from the solids, then dump the liver mixture into a food processor. Then blitz that all up until the whole thing is smoothish, brown, and creamy. Once creamatization is achieved, add one teaspoon of Chinese five spice, a few cracks of BP, and two teaspoons of Shaoxing cooking wine. Puree that all until it's smooth once more. With the machine running, begin adding in the cubed butter a few pieces at a time. Just wait until the pieces are fully dissolved before adding more, and keep going until all the butter is emulsified into the meat mixture. Scoop the pate into a ramekin or something similar, cover with plastic wrap, and chill down in the fridge until it's completely solidified. You can do this a day or two in advance if you'd like. Onto the home stretch, all we need to do now is slice up some veg. At the bakery, they keep the cucumbers and spears, but I really do dig a nice coin, so that's what we're gonna do here. Same thing for the jalapenos. And I'm using this nifty French mandolin for super easy and uniform cuts, so that's what's going on here with the daikon radish and carrots as well. These things are super convenient. There's even a julienne attachment, which is really nice when you're doing volume. These gorgy strips must be quick pickled, so to a saucepan, add one and a half cups of white vinegar, a cup of water, one tablespoon of salt and a half cup of sugar. Pop the pickling liquid over medium heat and stir just until the sugar is fully dissolved, then pour it on top of the prepped carrot and daikon. These pickles are best after sitting in the brine for a couple days, but feel free to use them immediately if you must. Just store the pickles in the fridge until you need them. They'll last for a few weeks in there. We now have all of the components for our banh mi ready to rumble, so let us build. Cut your cooled baguette in half, then remove some of the top and bottom crumb to make way for the other stuff. Starting with the pate, smear some of it on top of the bread. And remember, this stuff is very tasty, but it's also very strong, so a little goes a long way here. Go ahead and spread that on the top real nice like. Next up, the lemongrass chicken. And I like to be quite generous with the chicken as it is the main component of the sandwich. Of course, we can't forget about the pickles for that much needed zing of acidity. This gorgeous green galamaffery of vegetables includes our cucumber, cilantro, and jalapenos. Just pop those on there, however many you prefer. I like a lot of veggies on my banh mi. And there she blows. Now to test my theory on the importance of pate, I'm going to call on my unassuming homie and cameraman Frankie to see which witch he prefers. I got two sandos for you. Okay. Absorb that flavor. Absorb it, think about it. Mm -hmm. Be one mm. with it. Mm. Please try number two. Oh. Difference? Mm-hmm. Good difference or bad difference? That's a good difference. Yeah? All right, so so of the two, which did you did you like more? Definitely the second Really? One. And what do you taste that's like, what What do you taste? A spice. A spice? It's whatever that is. <laughs> if you don't like chicken liver, give it a chance because I know it sounds kind of whack and weird at first, but with the right things, paired with the right things, it is delicious, complimentary, and the evidence is, the proof is, uh, it's, it's in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. I'm the pudding. He's the pudding. Yep. I love Vietnamese food and really like lots of different food from that part of the world. It's always going to be fresh. It's always going to be super flavorful, herbaceous, spicy. It's kind of everything I want to eat. And it's super healthy too, which is pretty tight. Maybe I should go on a banh mi diet. Yeah, so let me know in the comments below what you would like to see me cook next. What should we cook next? Should it be more Vietnamese food? Should we do another country's food? What do you want to see? Well, let me know. Au revoir.